the beautiful names of beloved prophet the beautiful names of beloved prophet the beautiful names of beloved prophet alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala sayyidil mursalin اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاه والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى اله واصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاه والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى اله واصحابك يا نور الله دي فيوز ويلكم تو انذر ابيسود اوف اور سيريز اسماء النبي الحمد لله ان ايتش ابيسود وي ار انلايتنينج اور هارتس اند مايندز باي هيرينج نيومرس نيمز اوف رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اند ذيز نيمز هاف ان افكت الحمد لله they belong to the best of creation sallallahu alaihi wasallam and no doubt when we hear these names these names will illuminate our hearts and minds inshallah we will gain blessings through these names but before i begin mentioning further names in this episode a clarification an important point that i have been mentioning throughout the silsila throughout the series that there are many names of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam which are sifati names which are based on his beautiful character and not every name can be kept by the ummah So this is why it's important to consult, to meet, to sit with the ulama and ask them, ask them for guidance and instruction regarding which names can be kept, which names can't be kept. Because the last thing you want to do is make an intention to keep the name, to receive blessings, but instead you're being sinful because you've done something which you're not supposed to do. You've kept a name which is khas to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. So please bear this in mind, inshallah, when naming yourself, your child, or anyone else, inshallah. Now the first name that I'd like to mention in this silsila in this episode is al azim al azim azim normally we say and this is a name of allah azza wa jalla as well and here we're saying that it's a name of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well the meaning of this of al azim is al jalil al kabir that that personality who is very honorable al jalil al kabir and the meaning of al azim given by ulama as well is azamatu shay'i kawnu shay'i kamilan fi nafsihi mustaghniyan an ghayrihi for something to be azim it means that that thing is kamil is perfect in and of himself mustaghniyan an ghayrihi and he is not dependent on others and we know this regarding the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he is not dependent upon the creation he is only dependent upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we covered this discussion under the name al ghani when we said the prophet alaihi wasallam is called ghani as well so when we look at the the blessed personality of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is no one greater than him in creation there is no one more honorable than him in the entire creation allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him this rank and he sallallahu alaihi wasallam is only dependent upon the that of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the entire creation we know is dependent upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this will be evident on the day of judgment as well when we seek uh, the help from the prophet alaihi wasallam and ask him to open the door of intercession now the meaning of azim as we heard is al jalil al kabir and this name al azim this name of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is mentioned in the torah sharif as well alama jalaluddin suyuti rahmatullahi alayhi says that it's mentioned in the Torah Sharif wa sayalidu aziman li ummatin azimatin Allahu akbar that soon he sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be born as a great person as a great personality li ummatin azimatin whom for for a great umma Allahu akbar look at the blessings we're receiving for the sake of the prophet alaihi wasallam that he is azim and because of him sallallahu alaihi wasallam we have been described as azim as well that wa sayalidu aziman li ummatin azimatin that soon that person will be born who is azim and who will he be born for for an umma who is also azim subhanallah subhanallah so we are gaining blessings because of the prophet alaihi wasallam and in terms of his zat the prophet alaihi wasallam is azim yes great but also his characteristics his beautiful habits these are also azim and allah jalla wa ala has said in the quran in surah qalam wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim and oh beloved you are upon superior great character wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim the characteristics of the prophet ali salam his khuluq have also been described as, as azim as well so no one in creation can match him and no one can come 
close to him sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So we pray that for the sake of the greatness that Allah jalla wa ala has granted to his beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may he grant us his shafa'ah and may the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam be our saviour on the day of judgment as well. Ameen. Now the next name that I'd like to include in our episode is Al-Afif. Afif, Ain, Fa, Ya, Fa. And Afif means that individual who saves himself from all types of sins, in particular immodesty and shameful acts. The Prophet wasallam is Afif in this regard that he was so modest, he was so bashful, subhanAllah. And it's mentioned in one narration. Uh, the Sahaba even narrate this, that the Prophet ﷺ was more bashful, more shy than a virgin girl in her chamber. And this sifa of the Prophet ﷺ, being afif, being modest, being bashful, this is mentioned in the previous books as well. The scholars have stated, وَقَدْ كَانَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم النَّاسِ That the Prophet ﷺ was the most modest from all the people, subhanAllah. And you look at the life of the Prophet ﷺ, he would keep his blessed gaze lowered most of the time. He wouldn't look around here and there. He wouldn't give license to his eyes to look at anything. And he was protective of his eyes. And in the Qur'an, we have been given that hukum as well. قُلِّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ O beloved, say to the believers, they should lower their eyes. And the, the women of this ummah have also been given the same command in this verse. Um, the Prophet ﷺ, it's mentioned that he would look more towards the ground than towards the sky. And throughout his life, he preached modesty and adopting haya. And in one narration, he said, modesty is good in totality. al hayau khayrun kullu. So the Prophet wasallam always saved himself from immodest acts as well. He wouldn't speak immodestly. He wouldn't swear. He would never swear at others as well. He was not like that. He would never freely and openly curse people the way people do today. And we as Ummatis, we should follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah Jalla wa'ala for his sake grant us modesty as well for the sake of the blessed name Afif. Now the next name I would like to mention is Al-Afw. This is also a name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Al-Afw. And it's the name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. When it refers to the Prophet Alaihi Wasallam, it means that individual who forgives abundantly, profusely, immensely he forgives. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did that throughout his life as well. Everything which it was permissible to forgive, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forgave it, subhanAllah. Allama Shami Salihi Rahmatullahi Alayhi in his book Subulul Huda wa Rashad, he says there is one word, Al-Afu, and another word, Al-Afi. And he says that Afi, what does Afi mean? Al-Awwalu yadullu ala asl al-Afwi faqat. He says this word afi, it refers to someone who forgives occasionally or just once or who forgives one type of sin, shortcoming. As for afu, that refers to forgiving continuously and forgiving all types of wrongdoings, all types of shortcomings and sins as well. And this is why the Prophet وسلم, is af. He continues, he says, وَالثَّانِي يَدُلُّ عَلَى تَقْرِيرِهِ وَكَثْرَتِهِ بِالْإِضَافَةِ إِلَى كَثْرَةِ الظُّنُوبِ وَتَقَرُّرِهَا Meaning, the second word, Afu means to forgive continuously. The Prophet ﷺ was Af. What does it mean to forgive continuously? Forgive all types of sins as well. حتى أن من لم يعفي إلا عن نوع من الذنب فقط يسمى بالأول دون الثاني. And he says to the extent that the one who only forgives one type of sin or just once, then he can only be called Afi. And as for the one who forgives time and time again, and he forgives all types of wrongdoings and shortcomings, this person is known as Al-Afu. And the Prophet ﷺ, one of his names is Al-Afu. And this was the aqeel of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu ajma'in as well. They saw this as well, the forgiving nature of the Prophet ﷺ. Sayyidina Hassan bin Thabit radiallahu anhu, for example, says, إِنَّهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم كَانَ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ عَفْوًا وَتَجَاوُزًا The Prophet ﷺ forgave people and he pardon them the most from all the people. Meaning from all the people, it was the Prophet ﷺ who forgave and pardoned people the most. SubhanAllah. This was the aqeedah of Sahabi Rasul ta'ala. And we see this throughout his blessed seerah. He forgave his staunch enemies, those who were bloodthirsty and after his life, those who want to, wanted to martyr him. The Prophet ﷺ forgave them. 
And this was his beautiful characteristic, al-'af, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us tawfiq to forgive and overlook the faults of others as well. Now, the next name that I'd like to mention is al-fatih. Al-fatih, fatih. Fa alif ta ha. Now, this word has many meanings. And one meaning is hakim. Hakim, meaning the one who decides or makes a decision about another or others. And this is an individual known as Hakim. The Prophet ﷺ was Fatih and one meaning is Hakim. One meaning is the one who gives guidance to others. He is also known as Fatih. The one who helps others, who aids and assists others, he is also known as Fatih. Now because all of these meanings are found in the that of Rasulullah ﷺ, they all apply, alhamdulillah. And this name of the Prophet ﷺ, Fatih, he has mentioned it himself. In a hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Inna ma bu'ithu fatihan wa khatima." That indeed I was sent as a fatih and a khatim, wa u'tiyu jawami al kalim wa fawatihahu. And Allah subhanahu wa taala granted me comprehensive speech. Now, jawami al kalim. This is a miracle of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he would speak few words, but the meanings contained in those words were profound. They were uh, abundant. And you could take out so many deep and so many different meanings. And those words were comprehensive. So this was a miracle of the Prophet ﷺ that in a few words he would be able to explain so many things. Jawami al kalim. The Prophet ﷺ said, I was given Jawami al kalim. So in this hadith, you just heard the Prophet ﷺ said, I was sent as a Fatih. And this is a name of the Prophet. ﷺ. And we mentioned that one meaning of Fatih was Hakim. And the Prophet ﷺ was a Hakim, was a decision maker in regards to other people's matters and affairs. And whatever the Prophet ﷺ decides, it's uh, imperative and necessary upon an Ummati to follow that as well, to follow that decision and that judgment that the Prophet ﷺ gave. And remember that the Prophet ﷺ, whenever he gave a judgment, whenever he made a decision, it was based on justice, based on fairness, equality. It was never a wrong judgment. It was never a judgment based on uh, spite or based on hatred or based on anything that is wrong. The Prophet ﷺ always gave the best judgment and he did so for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another meaning as we said, a guide and the Prophet ﷺ guided people throughout his life. So many people, their destinies changed because of his guidance and one meaning of Fatih is the one who guides. The Prophet ﷺ is Fatih in this regard as well. One meaning of Fatih is to open. Because the Prophet ﷺ opened the eyes of people and they gained guidance through his that, and he opened their eyes to accept guidance, he is also known as Fatih as well. He opened their eyes to the straight path. They were able to traverse and travel on the straight path. This is why he is known as Fatih. He opened that way for them. He opened that path for them, subhanallah. So one name of the Prophet ﷺ is Al-Fatih. The next name I would like to mention is Al-Qasim. And this is a common name, people keep it today as well. Qaf Alif Sin Mim, Qasim. What does it mean? The one who distributes things to people, the distributor. And the Prophet ﷺ, because he is a means of people receiving blessings in the entire universe, meaning everything that anyone receives, is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it goes through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is our aqeedah. This is mentioned in a hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَا أَنَا قَاسِمٌ وَاللَّهُ يُعْطِي That indeed I am a distributor. وَاللَّهُ يُعْطِي And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the bestower, the one who endows. And he is the one who grants. I am the one who distributes the blessings of Allah. Because this phrase was said mutlaqan, unconditionally. The ulama have said, that this means that all the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants, it is through the distribution of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Meaning the Prophet sallam, distributes all the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the creation, subhanallah. And Allah has summed this up beautifully in his poetry, in Hadaqi Bakhshish, in one of his kalams, he says, Rabb hai mu'ti, ye hai qasim. Rabb hai mu'ti, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the bestower, the one who grants. Ye hai qasim. The Prophet Ali Salatullah is Qasim, the distributor. Rizq uska hai kilate ye hai. And it's the rizq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Jalla wa ala is the raziq. He is the one who grants sustenance. But who is distributing it? Who is giving it to people? Who is feeding people? The Prophet himself said in a hadith that I was given the keys 
to the treasures of the heavens and the earth. Subhanallah. The Prophet ﷺ was granted those keys and he has authority to distribute. This is why he is called Qasim. And the next name I would like to mention, Al-Mahmud. And this is a common name. People keep this name as well. And Mahmud, this means, هُوَ الْمُسْتَحَقُّ لِأَنْ يُحْمَدَ لِكَثْرَةِ خِصَالِهِ Mahmud is that individual who, um, when we're referring to the Prophet ﷺ, is that blessed individual who is deserving of being praised due to an abundance of good characteristics. Due to him having numerous good characteristics, he is deserving of being praised by creation. هُوَ الْمُسْتَحَقُّ لِأَنْ يُحْمَدَ لِكَثْرَةِ خِصَالِهِ now, the Prophet ﷺ, subhanAllah, his uh, excellences, his virtues, and his blessed uh, noble characteristics, who knows the limit? Who knows how many he has, sallallahu alayhi wa Allah jalla wa ala knows. The Prophet ﷺ said that no one knows my reality besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the Quran, we're told, وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَىٰ O oh, beloved, every coming moment for you is better than the preceding one. That Allah Jalla wa'ala is continuously blessing the Prophet ﷺ with more and more excellences and virtues as well. So who knows the exact number? No one in creation can enumerate or list them. So the Prophet ﷺ, he has an abundance of good characteristics and virtues. And this is why he is deserving of being praised. هُوَ الْمُسْتَحَقُّ لِأَنْ يُحْمَدَ he is the one who is deserving of being praised. Why? Because of his kathratul khisal, because of his abundant uh, characteristics and virtues and excellences as well. And the ulama mentioned three different things regarding this name of the Prophet Ali Sallam Mahmud. Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib radiallahu an has a couplet in which he said, Muhammadun wa huwa fit tawrati Mahmudun. That the Prophet ﷺ, Prophet Muhammad, he is known as Mahmud in the Torah. And Qadi Iyad Maliki Rahmatullahi Alayhi, he says, Huwa ismuhu fi Zabur. That Mahmud is the name of the Prophet ﷺ in Zabur. And Sayyiduna Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he has mentioned, Ismuhu fi Sama in Mahmud. His name in the heavens is Mahmud. Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. So in these three places, we're told that the name of the Prophet ﷺ is Mahmud in the Torah, in the Zabur. And in the heavens as well. So these were three different points mentioned by the ulama. Now the next name that I'd like to mention is Al Murtaja. Al Murtaja. This is the name of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is a famous name, Murtaja. This is a bit different. This is Murtaja with the jim. Now Murtaja means that blessed individual whom someone has hope in. And Alhamdulillah, the Prophet alaihi wasallam is that noble personality who the whole of creation. The believers have hope in Alhamdulillah and we will benefit from having hope in him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We will gain his shafaat insha'Allah. And the ulama have mentioned after writing this name Al-Murtaja لِأَنَّهُ أَلَّذِي يَرْجُوهُ النَّاسُ لِكَشْفِ كُرُوبِهِمْ وَجَلَاءِ مَصَائِبِهِمْ وَأَعْظَمِهَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فِي فَصْلِ الْقَضَى Why is the Prophet Alaihi Wasallam called Murtaja? Because the people have hope in his that. Why? They have hope that لِكَشْفِ كُرُوبِهِمْ He will remove their difficulties and he will also distance them from their afflictions, their problems and he will remove the greatest calamity that they will face on the day of judgment when uh, the judgment will take place subhanallah this is why the Prophet ﷺ is called Murtaja and we know from the famous narrations in Bukhari, Muslim, other books of Hadith as well. On the Day of Judgment, people will go to one Prophet, then another Prophet, Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam, Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salam, Sayyiduna Nuh alayhi salam. And finally, they'll be told by Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam, go to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. He can help you today. And on that Day of Judgment, as we just heard, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam will remove our difficulties, our calamities, our worries, our concerns, inshallah. And we have full hope in his blessed that. And if someone does not have hope in his blessed that, then how is he going to attain blessings? How is he going to attain assistance? This is the time in this world, have full hope in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All eyes should be upon him. He is our savior in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will grant us salvation from the hellfire and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have us admitted into paradise insha'Allah. So this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is known as Al-Murtaja and some scholars have read this as Al-Murtaji meaning with a kasra on the jinn and the meaning would be uh, that blessed individual 
which has hope that his shafa'at will be accepted in regards to his ummah. Qabul shafa'atin fi ummatihi. He has hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that his shafa'at will be accepted regarding his ummah. And the Prophet Sallam is that individual, is that blessed individual. And he has said that I will not be pleased until all of my ummah is in paradise. That those who were destined for hell, until they are taken out and entered into paradise, I will not be happy as well. So the Prophet Sallam is al-murtaji for this reason. So al-murtaja meant uh, that blessed individual in whom others have hope. And al-murtaji, the one himself has, who has hope in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will intercede for his ummah and his intercession will be accepted. Alhamdulillah, this is our Prophet salam. He did everything for us. The least we can do is try and please him. And how do we please him? On a very basic level, read your five daily salah, inshallah. The Prophet salam said, the Prophet said that Allah has placed the coolness of my eyes in salah. Provide coolness to the eyes of the Prophet. And read the five daily salah. Please the Prophet. Inshallah, you will gain an abundance of blessings from his noble court and his intercession on the day of judgment as well. May Allah Jalla wa'ala grant us the blessings of these beautiful names of Rasulullah. We will complete the episode now here. And until the next episode, may Allah protect and preserve you. Ameen. Bijahin Nabil Ameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The beautiful names of beloved Prophet. The beautiful names of beloved Prophet. The beautiful names of beloved Prophet.